In this video, I will be talking about statistical tools for research. There are two families of formulas in statistics that are used in research. One is the parametric test and second are those non-parametric tests. So parametric tests are provides more reliable result compared to non-parametric. So non-parametric is less reliable result as it calculates the rank of data. So we always prefer parametric test when we want to do when we want to compute the difference or relationship between two variables and but the problem is parametric test uh, needs to um, satisfy some assumptions before you can use them but if these assumptions are not met then we that's why we have non-parametric tests where we don't need to follow those assumptions and then we can just use them so let me illustrate to you the uh, the difference between parametric and non-parametric test so that uh, you can visualize how they differ so let's have the parametric and non-parametric and let's have some examples of set of data we have the violet and the blue ones so I intend to make it obvious that they are totally different the violet is way smaller than the blue ones and if the assumptions are not met of course that there are different assumptions for every parametric test and if they, we cannot meet the, all those requirements for us to use parametric test then we use non-parametric and this is how it is done so the numbers becomes one two three four five why is that so the violet is one two three four five it's indicating that it's coming to the arrangement is first second third fourth and fifth so it's the rank and the blue ones is also arranging from first to fifth, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So notice that this ranks doesn't uh, consider the values of the data. So it just consider the rank, and that's a problem. Where the parametric result is obviously not equal, because these two numbers are totally different. The blue ones is way larger than the violet, while in non-parametric it becomes equal. So that's the danger of using non-parametric test. Now every parametric test have different um, assumptions or requirements before you can do um, you can use the formula, and they also have some common um, assumptions. And one of them is test of normality or the normality of the data. So that means before you can use parametric test, you should make sure that the data must be uh, normally distributed or the, the graph of the data is in a bell curve form and so what are the formulas used to um, to know if the the data is normal we use shapiro work test and kolmogorov smirnov test where shapiro work is more specific and while well, the kolmogorov is more general so in other words Shapiro work is more powerful, it is more reliable result. Uh, it's giving more reliable result compared to the Kolmogorov Smirnov. But in, in most cases, in my case, I, I use both Shapiro work and Kolmogorov Smirnov to make sure that we are having, we are, we are giving the correct uh, result that the data is normal or not. If the data is not normal, we usually do transformation of the data to make it normal. We do change the values, but not literally change it uh, directly, but instead we use some um, procedures using a software in order to, um, to convert the numbers so that it can be normal. But it, there is no 100% sure that it becomes normal. There is a possibility, but there, it is not 100%. So sometimes it even if you convert it, it's still not normal, and in that case, we use non-parametric test. Another common uh, assumption for a parametric test is 
the test of homogeneity. So the hom homogeneity of the data, meaning the data, the variables, has the, the same variance. The variance of the data for the variables are equal. So we have Levin's test. Levin's test is used to assess the equality of variances for a variable. So this will test the equality of variance of the two variables. So let us move on to the formulas or the statistical formulas uh, used in research to know that if there is significant interference or significant relationship between two variables. So the first one is the t-test for independent samples. So this, this test is used to compare means of two independent groups. So it is just limited to two, but it also must be independent groups so let's for example so we have two groups section a and section b so these are let's say this is a section in a, in a school and these are composed of six uh, 12 students in all six students for each group so there are th these are the grades of section a and the grades of section b of six students for each and we want to know the if there is difference or significant difference between the two we want to know if section A is better than the section B or vice versa. So that's uh, the parametric test that is used to compare them. Now, if the assumptions are not met, let's say it is the data is not normal or the variances are not equal, then we use this uh, non-parametric test. We have the Mann Whitney U test. So this non-parametric test will compute the difference of the, these two independent groups even if the assumptions for parametric tests are not met. Now another statistical tool that we use in research is t-test for paired sample. So this t-test is used to compare the means of two paired groups. So it is limited to two groups and it is limited for paired groups. So like for example, we have score of math and science. So it is paired because the scores in math is paired with science. The score 85 in math for student 1 cannot be paired with the other scores in science because the score 85 in math, score 85 in science in the first row is exclusively for student 1. It cannot be interchanged to the others. So that makes it paired group compared to the independent samples that you can interchange within group. So even if you interchange them, it's still the same group and you can still compute. But in this case, for a paired group, if you interchange one of the numbers or values, it's going to be different result. So now if, if the assumptions for parametric tests of this kind of test is not met, then we have an alternative non-parametric test which is the Wilcoxon sign drunk test. Now, another uh, statistical tool is the analysis of variance, or commonly called as ANOVA. So, this is used to compare the means of two or more independent groups. So, similar to independent uh, t test, it is comparing the means of two groups but ANOVA is not limited to two it can be more groups like this we have section sections A, B to C we have three groups and we can compare the means of these three groups which cannot be done by t-test independent and still there are assumptions because this is parametric test and if the assumptions are not met then we have an alternative non-parametric test which is the Kroskal Wallis test. Another formula that is used in research is the repeated measures ANOVA. So this is used to compare the means of two or more paired groups. So this is similar to the t-test paired samples, although that is limited only to two, while this repeated measures ANOVA can be used to two or more groups. For example, we have this. Uh, paired groups 
math, science, and English. So there are three groups in all that is paired. So all the scores for math, science, and English for student one should be paired and cannot be interchanged. It must be 85, 85, and 94. And it cannot be interchanged with 85, 85, and then 80. So that is the meaning of paired groups. And if the assumptions are not met, then we can use an, an alternative non-parametric test, which is the Friedman's ANOVA. So let's have the next statistical tool, which is the analysis of covariance, or commonly called as ANCOVA. So this is used to compare the means of two or more independent groups, which is the same as the ANOVA. And this is used when the ANOVA can test the variables because of the covariates. So let's, let me illustrate an example. So for example, we have this section A and section B, and we want to compare the means of these two groups. Now, uh, let's say this, this, is the this is the result of the test after having a, a class or lesson, let's say if you are a teacher. And then sometimes the scores of the one group is bigger than the other because they already have an idea of the lesson before you have taught them the lesson. So that means there is a possibility that your the the way of teaching is not the reason why they got the the better score. But it's because they have already the prior knowledge before the test is done or before the lesson was done. And so that's the reason why we do pre-test and post-test so that we will know if they already have an idea of the lesson before it is done. So our covariate here is the pretest. Pretest uh, represents the prior knowledge of the students. So the lesson, uh, the, the knowledge learned is affected by those uh, stock knowledge by the students where the stock knowledge is represented by the pretest. So let's have now the, the another statistical tool for research. We have Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, which is commonly called as Pearson's R. And this is used to measure the strength of relationship of two continuous variables. So let me emphasize that it is computing continuous variables, meaning they are numbers wide a uh, variety of numbers. So, for example, like this, so watching TV in hours and the weight in pounds. So, we want to know, let's say in our study, we want to know if the longer we watch TV, the, uh, the bigger uh, is, is our weight increasing as we increase the du time duration in watching TV and so on. So, that that's, that's makes sense so because maybe uh, too much just sitting on your couch watching TV you don't have you, you won't spend exercising that's why you increase your weight so that's the thing that you want to know and that that's one example in testing the relationship of two variables so we use Pearson's R now this is a parametric test and there are assumptions to meet but if the assumptions are not met then we use non-parametric tests. There are two non-parametric te tests to do. Either use Pierman's row or Kendall style. So in either of the two, it, it's still uh, giving you this almost the same result. But uh, for me, Kendall style is more accurate compared to the Spearman's row based on my experience. So let's go to the next statistical tool for research, which is the chi-square test of independence. So there are actually three chi-square tests. One is test of um, goodness of fit. Second is test of homogeneity. And the third is chi-square test of independence. And this is commonly used among the three in the field of research. And so this one is used to measure the strength of relationship of Two categorical variables. So, as you can see, it is similar to Pearson's R testing the relationship, but this is just uh, measuring the categorical variables 
where the Pearson's R kind of measure. Like for example, we have these variables, gender and frequency of online games. So you want to know if which of the uh, genders, male or female, is uh, often playing online games. So the result for the data for gender is, of course, there are only two options, either male or female. And for frequency, you can make around three. One is always, second is sometimes, and third is never. And these are non-numeric, and you can compute it. You can calculate this using Pearson's uh, correlation. And that's why in, uh, in, in this kind of variable, we can use chi-square test. So let's have another statistical tool for research. This is linear regression. And this is used to de determine the relationship of two continuous variables, which is similar to the Pearson's R. It is also used to predict values of the other variable. So aside for knowing the relationship, it can also predict values based on the, um, the relationship of the two variables. So let me show you the uh, the detailed um, difference of the two. So let's let's illustrate. We have two variables one and two for Pearson's R. So the the test of relationship of Pearson's R is like this. So it's it's asking the effect of variable one to variable two, and also the effect of variable two to variable one. So that means there's there is actually no cause and effect relationship, no true cause and effect relationship because you can interchange the two variables. So either of the two variables will be the first one on the left or on the right. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same result. So you, there's no dependent variable. There's no independent variable when computing Pearson's R. Because again, what you are after is just the strength of the relationship in the two variables. Now for regression, so it's going to be like this, independent variable and dependent variable. So it is more specific that the one is independent, the other is in the dependent variable, and you cannot interchange them. So there, it is only one way. So that the cost will be your independent variable, and the effect will be the dependent variable. So in this case, you want to know if this independent variable has an effect, if you are going to change the dependent variable, will it affect the dependent variable? So that's the difference of the Pearson's R and the regression. Although both are parametric tests, but regression is more specific and it is more strict with its assumption. So let's have some other statistical formulas used uh, in doing research. We have reliability test where we use these formulas. To do to know if the your test is reliable, your questionnaire is reliable. So we have Coder Richardson's formula, with uh, either 20 and 21. So commonly called as KR20 and KR21. And also we have Cronbox Alpha. So I prefer to use Cronbox Alpha because um, it is more accurate and it is more flexible in in computing the values because KR20 and KR21 have some limitations and and you, there are things that they are questionnaires that you cannot use um, KR20 but it said you use KR21 and there are questionnaires that you cannot use KR21 but you can use KR20 while Cronbox Alpha can you do for either of the two um, either of the questionnaires any questionnaires will be computed by Cronbox Alpha. That's why I prefer to use Cronbox Alpha. While um, these tests are just for some uh, reliability of, of a questionnaire, the, the objective questionnaires, but if it's for rubric, we want to know the inter-rate reliability test. So we want to see how reliable or how consistent our rubric is. So we use Krippendorf's alpha or please kappa. So Krippendorf's alpha is more powerful, more accurate than a please kappa. 
and Crippenders Alpha is more strict to pass compared to, to the fleas. And also, fleas kappa is just limited to categorical data, where Crippenders Alpha has different options. It can be you can choose either categorical or continuous data. So that's for interator reliability test. So another statistical uh, tools I use are the test of validity. So there are two test uh, formulas used in test of validity, which are the Krippenderbs alpha and the fleece kappa. So this is actually also used previously in the interator reliability. It's because Krippenderbs alpha and fleece kappa also measures the agreement of the uh, raters. So in, in, in other words, these as long as it involves raters, they're not going to use this formula. So, uh, how does uh, it work? So, the, the questionnaires that you have will be shown to some raters, and they're going to know if your skill, uh, the skill measured in your test, is really asking the, the skills that you are after. And if, they, if the raters will agree, then that means the Krippenderbs alpha will be very high or the fleece kappa will be very high because it is measuring the agreement of the raters. So that is the test of validity. Now last is we have the sample size computation. So before you conduct your study, you want to know first the valid sample size of your study because if you will do the the, if you'll use the whole population as your respondents, then it's going to be very, very expensive. But of course, you cannot just simply guess the number of samples because there is a valid number of samples so that you can generalize the result. Using a parametric test, you can generalize the result even if that, even if you are using number, uh, just a small number of samples. As long as that number of samples is valid. Now, to make sure that the number of samples is valid, we compute using some uh, important formulas. So here's the formula, the Cochrane's formula. Cochrane's formula is very flexible. It can be used to any degree of uh, sample size, uh, any percent of confiden uh, confidence, either 99% or 95%. So that is very flexible formula to use for sample size computation. but it's a bit uh, complex. And we also have a formula, Yamani's formula, which is coming from the Cochrane's formula. It is just a derivation. It is derived from the Cochrane's formula, and it becomes simpler. And it's very simple to use the Yamani's formula. So before, it is called also Slovin's formula. So Yamani's formula is uh, simple, but it is not always, it is not flexible. It is limited to some uh, re assumptions, requirements. So there should be requirements met before you can use the Yamani's formula. So you have to be careful in choosing which formula for sample size computation. But still, there are so many formulas for sample size computation. And what I'm showing you is the most common formula used. Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this video. Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and also write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section.